you were to ask most people what a typical cyclist looks like, you'd probably get a range of different answers. Some might say a lycra-clad idiot that thinks they own the road, while others might say a lithe, super slim athlete at the peak of their fitness. And then they look at me, an overweight man in his 50s. If I'm on the bike, we are definitely into sack of custard territory. Essentially, and oh how this word makes my skin crawl, a mammal. Usually when I'm having that conversation, I'm wearing civvies. So the person I'm talking to sees someone who is perhaps a bit delusional. What? You? Ride a bike? And to be fair, if I wasn't a cyclist myself and didn't know any better, I would probably have a similar reaction. Now I've said it on many, many occasions, but fact of the matter is that you are never too fat to cycle. Okay, you might not be lightning quick, particularly uphill, and you might not win any fashion awards for wearing Lycra, but there's nothing physically stopping you from getting on a bike, turning the pedals, and going from where you started and ending up at a different location, even if that different location is only 200 meters down the road. In my eyes, that makes you a cyclist, and it has got to be infinitely better for you than sitting on the sofa and watching Emmerdale farm. Generally speaking, once you are on the bike, people are very supportive. Most see someone that's doing something positive, be it to improve their health, to use an environmentally friendly form of transport, or to simply have some fun. What's not to applaud? One question that I am asked quite a lot is, is it possible to lose weight cycling? Well, the short, pithy answer is yes, but the longer, slightly more realistic one is, that depends. Another question I'm frequently asked is, how come you're still fat if you ride a bike? Well, the real answer to both of these questions is very simple. It's far more about what you eat than how much you ride. Unfortunately, just because someone rides a bike, it doesn't automatically follow that they will lose weight. Sadly, the old thing about not being able to outride a bad diet is completely true. Unless, of course, you're riding hundreds of kilometers a day, every day. But even then, you have to be very careful. Remember Mark Cavendish and his mum's cakes over the winter? Or dare I even say it, Jan Ulrich. Yep, even the pros are only a couple of sticky buns away from becoming Mr. Blobby. The good news though is that if your diet is basically pretty healthy and you only need to lose a few kilos, say three or four, increasing your exercise will definitely help you shed that extra weight. If, like me though, you need to lose considerably more than that, you will have to pay very careful attention to what you shove down your gullet. For me personally, if I want to lose a significant amount of weight, I also know it means a significant change to my diet. And yes, I'm fully aware of the advantages of going keto or going vegan. And to be honest, if I did either of those long-term, I think I would just end up going bonkers. But just because I have the will of a British politician, it doesn't mean that everyone has. If you can eat healthily and have sensible portion control, it will help you to lose weight, particularly if you can add some exercise as well. Something that I've found in the past when I have lost weight is that riding pretty much every day sometimes also reduced my appetite. This meant that I was far less likely to overeat or eat something bad for me. Again, the exercise wasn't directly responsible for the weight loss. It was all down to the reduced intake of food. Music 
So, playing devil's advocate for a moment, why are some people so obsessed about weight, particularly other people's? Obviously, being overweight does have a massive implication on your physical health, but there's also no denying that society looks down on overweight people simply because they're overweight. In many cases, this has absolutely nothing to do with health issues. It's purely and simply discrimination. Some people may try and justify it, but it's still discrimination. So for the record, no, being fat does not mean that you are some kind of subhuman species, nor does being fat necessarily mean that you're stupid, lazy, unfit or even unattractive. Give me Danica Brescia over Victoria Beckham or Kira Knightley any day of the week. There's a lot of negative talk about fat acceptance around at the moment, but I think this has to be viewed with a slightly wider outlook. On the one side, accepting a potentially life-threatening health issue is obviously dangerous, but on the other, it could also be a way of taking control away from the fat haters. So stop beating yourself up for not having the perfect body, as that just plays right into their hands. Simply being happy in your own skin, whether you're trying to lose weight or not, is a way of being in control of your own mental well-being. No one, and I mean no one, is perfect. We're all bodged and bungled in some way. If you are significantly overweight, losing a few kilos will be one of the biggest favours you can do for yourself. But at the end of the day, you only have one body. As the song says, you should never be ashamed of it or worried about what other people think of it. It's the greatest instrument you will ever own. Thanks for watching.